All right, we're going to jump into case studies. The first one is all about creating an owned community. So excited to hear more about this one. Take it away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we wanted to take a different approach in terms of you know how we housed our content and how we distributed it to our target audience. And I think you know it's no surprise in that whatever platform it is you're hosting on, really they have, let's say, their best interests in mind. And <laughs> Rather than trying to continue to keep up with the changing algorithms of, you know, hosting a community within one of these platforms, we thought, go it on our own. So it's full control. We can create a great experience and platform and community that that our target audience is going to want to keep coming back to. I like that. Ironically, this morning, I just got done writing a letter to my clients about some LinkedIn algorithm changes. So it's, it's funny how you live in a world of an own community where you don't have to worry about those things. So give us give us the context around like the business problem. So besides getting off, you know, what we call rented social channels into mm-hmm. own social channels, um, what else was going on in the business that you said, yeah, this is a good decision to kind of create our own community? Yeah. So one of our targeted buyers really needed a lot of education related content. So they are in a role where they're looking to up level. And of course, by one of the ways of up leveling, they can leverage some technology like ours, but <laughs> that wasn't the main focus. It was all about really just educating them on how to be the experts in their role and get that strategic seat at the table. And for some of them, that meant really starting from scratch and starting from the basics. And we started to see a lot of you know, incoming inbound keywords, and you know, to our site, it was related to how do I do this in my role? So we figured let's grab that low hanging fruit, create a space where they can come, that they can just learn. There's no promotions, no product clubs from our end, and, you know, serve up the content in a format that they're comfortable with. Yeah. So how was it in getting people aligned internally to say, yep, this is the right decision? I Take us through that process. Yes. So the biggest hurdle definitely was pitching the need for a microsite that was outside of our you know, primary website. And I'm sure you know, driving traffic to the company website, pretty important, pretty up there. So by saying, hey, we want to create this unique destination for them to go to before they're ready to engage directly with our brand and with our website was a bit of a sell. We had to yeah. definitely have some meetings and conversations around that, what the benefits would be, of course, making sure that we're not cannibalizing each other's sites and you know, really creating it, you know, a space where it's easy for them to just sashay on over to our, our corporate website yeah. once we're ready to start engaging with us directly. And how long did that take? And I'm going to, this should be a new game show element of the podcast where listeners can guess the number of days it takes to make this decision. And it's going to be different for every company, but, but tell us how long that took. For us, it took about a quarter. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of days. So hopefully no one was <laughs> there. I wish I was that impressive, but it's like a bit of doing all right so you get buy-in to do this you have to figure out now the old tech story which is do we build it do we create it on our own like tell us about how you actually built the community yeah so we were able to you know leverage our our in-house talent to set that up for us you know working with our designers to make sure again the ui is you know impeccable for the experience that we were looking to deliver and was able to you know really draw on our team at hand to collectively build that for us, which also helped us, you know, maintain that control in terms of where we're going to point people back to our own properties, back to our, you know, main brand website. So we definitely needed that visibility, make sure all the ETMs are in place and we've got all the right tracking to make sure that that's actually happening. So we benefited from keeping that internal. Okay. So now this thing is built. Is it purely content? Is it other type of functional, you know, content. What are you giving to that community? What are they there to do? Yeah, so it's primarily content. We've got the site itself kind of broken up into a, we'll say the classic crawl, walk, run type framework. Yes. Um. So then that also gives us some amazing insights into where our target audience is sitting. Are they just starting? Are they that middle ground? Or do they see themselves as more of that expert level? So we've got some additional insights for our personas there and. There's also, you know, some mention of any related events 
But again, steering clear of any of those peer promotional, hey, come join, you know, this demo that we've got set up and just really focused on, you know, here's just some educational content that you can consume at your leisure. And of course, a variety of content, infographics, ebooks, videos, yep. the full gamut. So I'm sure at some point you had to make this decision around, you know, in the world of communities, there are some that is just, hey, you're just, you're logged into our our owned world and we know what you're consuming. The other is the let's have a party and let everyone talk to each other. We're just the host of that party. Where did you fall on that spectrum? Definitely on the first one. So while, you know, there is the ability for people to comment, we found that particularly for our target audience, they didn't want to, we'll say, error their dirty laundry in terms of what they were looking at, what they were consuming. So we didn't see as much of that interaction. So our target then was to just focus on providing them with the right content at the right time. Yep. Okay. And then so let's fast forward. You've implemented this. You've got now the data to understand, you know, what traffic is being driven to the main site? How are you converting on that? Give us like the business performance. Look at how this actually did. Yes. So we were able to attribute essentially a I'm trying to think of the number off the top of my head. It was about a 30% increase of people coming from the own community page over to our website. And then in terms of overall traffic to the community page, we were tracking, you know, around 5,000 every two weeks. So we saw a really, really great uptick. And now we're just starting to sort of dig into the metrics. This is a bit newer. So we're starting to dig into to see exactly how much revenue we were able to influence as yep. part of the initiative. Okay. Awesome. That's the magic part of any marketing initiative is right, is the tying it back to the revenue. I have a tactical question now, and you kind of alluded to this before when you talked about the website being off platform from the brand, building that domain authority. Like, was it a newly purchased URL or had it been around? So I'm just trying to, the reason I asked the question is the, that's the biggest fear of like, Hey, we got this great new URL, but like no one has ever heard of it. And I say, no one. Google has never heard of it. So how did you navigate that? Yeah. So yeah, we definitely went with net new URL. So we focused a lot on our promotion. So leveraging all of those channels to get the word out there, as well as enabling our sales team. So when they would engage with prospects, then they could arm them also with a link to that site. And then also we have a few, few advocates that are really championing for us. They're also contributing some content to that website. So they're able to say, hey, come check out what I wrote here. So they're able to leverage their personal brand on their end and amplify that. And then we, of course, benefit from all those that are looking to learn from their experience. 